All right, so in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to have a tremendous amount of lag late in the downswing where it matters the most, and to finally get these hands leading in front of the golf ball, this lead wrist bowed toward the impact, and to get wrist angles and conditions that are completely elusive to 99% of the golfers, including myself for years and years. It wasn't until recently that I finally figured out the most important thing that hinges on lag, shaft lean, compressing the golf ball, all that comes down to one thing, and it's momentum. Let me get into that here in a second. So first, let's talk about what the best players in the world are doing. As they're making a downswing, in the downswing, when their hands are in front of their right leg, they have this big angle on the club. As they move through contact, their body opens up, and their hands are in front of the golf ball at impact. You'll often see this lead wrist pretty bowed, and then from there, they get into what I call the straight line release, which means that the club will very first split their forearms out in front. So to do this, you have to have the right momentum moving through the golf ball, and you have to have the right wrist angles and wrist set to be able to do that. And what's happening here, what most players are doing is they're getting to the top of the swing, they set their club very early, and then hammer on it hard from the start of the downswing. Well, as my body rips open very hard, as I throw this club very hard, all of my angles of lag get shot out. I don't have anything left through impact. And when my hands are in front of my right leg, usually I see players with their club shaft like this rather than like that. When they're at impact, I see them with the club shaft straight up and down. The ball rolls up the face and loses all kinds of consistency, compression, solid contact. It's just kind of a, a glancing blow versus the pros being here at impact. And the straight line release is happening at the golf ball instead of the straight line release happening well through the golf ball. Well, here's a drill that's gonna knock out all that for you. What I want you to do is make a little half back swing with no wrist set at all. So we're gonna go very little wrist set. And then as you start your down swing, I wanna feel like this club is straight. So it's casting out, it almost has no lag. That would be here if I was at the ball. It's way wide like this, so the club's really wide. And then as you rotate your body open, I want you to feel like you get into this position where the hands are in front. Now what happens here is, because the club is casted out or doesn't have any lag in it, as you rotate your body open, it's gonna naturally start to lag back. The opposite of that would be me picking the club up with my hands and arms, I have tons of lag in my backswing, and then I throw it out in the downswing. This is the opposite, no picking it up with the hands and arms in the backswing, and it lags in the downswing. So you're gonna feel like, in relationship to your body, your club head is going this way as your body's opening up. I know it's a crazy feeling. It's really gonna feel odd to you, but that's what it's gonna feel like as it opens up. It would look something like this. No wrist set. As I turn through, my hands are increasing the angle. Lead wrist bowing, right wrist is angled back. So I'll do that a few times. There's my downswing. As I come through, I'm gonna feel like my wrist stays bowed and my club head stays under my hands. Now, if you do this correctly, you can take a nine iron like I have here today, and it's gonna come out low like a laser, and it's gonna be one of the most solid shots you've hit. One little key area, or one key thing to keep in mind while you're doing this, I'll get to it in a second, but first let me go ahead and hit one. So wide, as I rotate open, hands lag, and then the club head stays below my hands as I'm coming through. Let's go ahead and give it a shot here. Right, that is low, low, low. It's a little 58 yard shot. It's not gonna go far when you're doing this, but it's gonna launch incredibly low. So for a nine iron, the vertical launch angle or the angle that the ball leaves the ground is usually gonna be somewhere in the ballpark of 20 degrees, low 20s, something like that would be good. That one launched at 8.9 degrees. And in fact, if I look at my dynamic loft or how much loft there was on the club at impact, if I go and look at my table here, it was 13.7 degrees of dynamic loft. Now that may not mean a lot to someone, but your nine iron has about 40 degrees of loft on it naturally. That means by doing the drill the way I did it there, I took from 40 degrees of loft all the way down to 13, right? So it's really, really de-lofted. Basically means I have so much lag through contact, it's unbelievable. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and do that again. No wrist set, open the body as the hands lead the way, 
and then the club head in the follow through stays below the hands here. It doesn't flip back up past the hands. Let's give it another shot. Yeah, very low. Again, that one launched at 8.3 again. These are not gonna be really hard hit. Again, that one flew 55 yards with a nine iron. That's as hard as I can hit it doing this drill. Now here's the key to this. I don't wanna be uppercutting the ball. What I mean by that is I don't wanna feel like I'm doing this and hitting up on the ball this way. I wanna feel like I'm hitting down on the ball and still getting a little bit of a divot or brushing the turf in front of the golf ball. So it's not a top spin upstroke. It's here lagging, hitting down, and then my hands are staying, or my club head is staying below my hands. So let's try that out again. And that may be as solid of a shot as I've ever hit in my life. It's perfectly compressed. The carry on that was 70 yards. That's the most I'm gonna get out of this. I'd recommend starting out like 20 or 30 yards. The ball hit really low on this impact screen. So if we're looking on this screen, um, let's walk off how many feet I am away. I'm about 15 feet. The ball hit below waist high on this impact screen. So you get a sense of how low that's coming out. If I go back and look at my launch monitor again, and I pull up the table, I'm looking at my dynamic loft of 14.2. So I hit three shots, 13.7, 13.9, 14.2. That's taking almost 30 degrees of loft off this club, which means that my club shaft is leaning forward as I hit this ball 30 degrees. That is an extreme amount. You're never gonna do that much in a real shot. We're trying to exaggerate it as much as possible and then gradually work into a real swing. So do that for 30 or 40 reps until that ball is just coming out low. I also don't want you to feel like you're brushing us across the ball, like I'm holding off on this and it's just swiping across it. I want you to feel like as my, I get shaft lean, my club is going through the golf ball and it'll be a nice little draw. You can see how all those shots drew from right to left. So basically I'm feeling like as my club comes through the ball, as I, as I go past impact, my club head's gonna release on the outside of the ball. If you hit a slice, your club head's glancing and it's releasing on the inside of the golf ball. So basically my golf ball here, the club moves to the left across it. As I release with a draw, it moves to the right to the outside of it. That's how you hit a draw. If I move it squarely through it, it's gonna be a straight shot. So no wrist set, increase in the angle, hands stay below, my, or the club head stays below my hands. And the most important thing, I'm hitting some turf. I don't want to feel like I'm uppercutting or drop kicking this shot. Let's go again. A little thin on that one. So that's one that I redo. I didn't get quite as much turf. I tried to swing a little too hard. Yes, it launched very low. I compressed it. It went 87 yards, that's just a little too much. Let's go back off of it a little bit and make sure that I get a little more turf as I'm hitting this. There we go, perfect again. Waist high when hit the screen, 69 yards, launched at 13.9, just really compressing it. So once you get the feel for that, again, 20, 30 shots, we're just gonna build that up a little bit bigger. Let's go half swings now. Halfway back, very little wrist set. As I make a full swing, my body opens. I'm increasing the lag, shaft lean. And then as I come through, I'm feeling like my club head stays below my hands as long as possible. Now, if you're going kind of half back swing to have follow through, it's probably gonna be level with your arms. Let's go ahead and give that a whirl. There we go, nice and solid. 131 yards with a nine iron. Really felt like I extended through that and the club lagged behind my hands the whole way. Again, not a glancing blow. If you're messing this up, there's two things that could be happening. One, I'm uppercutting the ball. That's gonna be a glancing blow. I need to get that divot, I need to get through the ball. Number two, I could be glancing across the golf ball rather than feeling like I'm hitting the golf ball and letting my club release out to the right of it. Now let's go three quarter swing. Back to here really wide. Club head trailing behind. And then I'm gonna be here where I feel like my arms and the club are in a straight extension with each other. I'm not gonna let this club fold back up where I could be breaking down my angles, scooping through impact. This will keep a lot of compression on it. Let's give it a whirl. There we go, 157, nice and solid. I like to hit a little more turf. So this time I'm gonna make a full swing. Again, 
Very little wrist set as I go back. You feel like you're John Rahm, maybe. Club really high in the, in the air. Lagging, lagging, lagging through impact. And then it doesn't really set as you're coming on through. It feels like it's very long and extended. So this is almost a full swing here. And you'll notice as I get to that full swing, even though I feel like I'm here, it's naturally gonna start to hinge back up as I come on through. 161 yards with a nine iron. I don't think I can do any better than that. Now finally, it's gonna be a full swing. The only difference here in a full swing, I get a little more wrist set at the top, and I go ahead and let this relax and fold up in the follow through. I don't have to hold everything straight. Let's try this out. There we go. As good as I can hit a nine iron, 170 yards carry. Doesn't matter how far it is, it's about the compression. So whatever speed you're at, you're gonna be hitting it a lot farther than you're used to using this technique. Now there's one thing I left out of here that I think can be extremely helpful, and that's getting close to the golf ball. Lots of people call this covering, getting down on the golf ball, compressing it. You have to get your body close to it. And I found that there's a specific feeling that you can have with your knuckles with specifically with your left hand and your right hand, but I like the right hand because most people are right-handed. They feel what's going on in the right hand a lot better. But if I do this properly, I can get tons of lag and it makes this drill all that much easier. I'm gonna play a preview of what I call the knuckle dragger. And all you need to do to see the full video is go ahead and click the card that pops up on your screen. If you don't see the card, don't worry, just click the link down below in the description and you'll get instant access to it. I can't wait to share with you this knuckle dragger. It's gonna really help take this to the next level. You're gonna be compressing the heck out of the golf ball. Let's go and get started. I got an awesome video for you. This one is what I call knuckle dragger. And this is one of the best ones, one of the big missing pieces to players that are struggling to get more lag. Now, let's talk about when you lose lag, what's happening. A lot of times what's happening is as you make your downswing, if we're looking from this down the line view, what happens is my hips go toward the golf ball. They start to slide forward. My chest moves back away from this golf ball, so I'm getting farther away from the golf ball. And then all of a sudden, I cast, I flip, and I don't have a lot of lag there. Well, look how far my hands are away from the ground. Also notice when I get my hands closer to the ground, so as my hands get lower, then what happens is they also go forward more. So as I wanna have more lag, when you feel like your knuckles are dragging the ground, then that club is naturally gonna lag back behind and then you're gonna release that out in front. When your hands are far away from the ground, well, if I had all that lag, where would I be swinging? I'd be swinging a foot over top of the golf ball. So you have to kind of flip, release that lag early to just make contact with the golf ball at all. So having those knuckles feeling like they're scraping the ground is really gonna be a big key. Now, another piece to this, again, when I talked about having, losing that posture, your hips go forward you're gonna to wanna to feel like, as those hands scrape the ground, your knuckles drag the ground. 